this is the only world he knows, and it's a very strange world uh, when you see it objectively. I mean, security guards all the time with this and that. But he seems to be adapting very well, simply because maybe that's his only reality, you know? Now we're good friends, and uh, now I think I feel more comfortable about the relationship because I see that he's a pretty strong person as well, so he's going to survive. Oscar Wilde once wrote, where there is sorrow, there is holy ground. The Dakota, that fortress-like apartment building where Lennon lived and died, has become somewhat of a shrine in New York. Well-meaning fans still gather there in tribute, creating an ever-present security problem for Yoko, who is rarely without her guards. But she says the fans and the sympathetic letters have kept her going in hard times. After struggling for years to maintain her independence, she is now content to call herself the keeper of the wishing well. Now that John's gone, I don't have that sort of me-me feeling, you know. And uh, all these uh, fans of John's uh, writing to me, uh, only because I'm Mrs. Lennon, I suppose. And in the old days, I would have rebelled against that, you know. Well, still, I mean, look, you know, I don't need that, you know. And I think there was a little bit of that even after his death. Uh, but uh, these days, um, when somebody says, uh, Mrs. Lennon, this and that, I sort of cherish it, you know. But the year has not been a peaceful one. Continuing interest in her life with Lennon has created a booming business in tell-all books about the pair. And what former friends and lovers have had to say hasn't been as devotional as Yoko's fan mail. On top of that, John's personal letters, unpublished songs, and diaries were stolen from their home, resulting in the arrest of a former assistant. Once hurt, Yoko is now forgiving. Even the people who wrote terrible things that hurt me or whatever, I remember them as the the people that I knew, you know, and I like that side. I still love that side. Now, who's going to be doing that work? Yoko holds a full-time job, running a family business empire estimated by Forbes magazine to be worth $150 million. She didn't have any business experience when Lennon turned the company over to her with a blank check in 1975, but she's turned out to be a formidable negotiator and a canny investor. During the Lennon's five years in seclusion, she quadrupled the value of their estate through timely purchases of property, including five apartments at the Dakota, dairy farms, and historical homes like this waterfront estate on Long Island, where she now spends her weekends. Most prized are her collections of Oriental art and Egyptian artifacts, including this spectacular mummy case. I wanted to invest our money in something that we love, something that we believe in, rather than papers, you know, like stock. <laughs> but investment value isn't the only reason she collects these treasures. She believes they hold a magical power that brings well-being to those who own them. Yoko and John were firm believers in the mystical world, and she continues to consult the numbers and spirits where business matters are concerned. It's an unorthodox approach but one that she says is usually successful. Most people think of everything as a contest, something to prove their power. But if I did that, I'm not going to win. I'll be at best the same as they are, equal. And the power I have is the fact that I'm different. <laughs> Yoko's second home is the recording studio. A self-confessed workaholic, she frequently returns there to finish up songs she made with John and record new ones of her own. All my life, work was the thing that was most important for me. I don't get, get betrayed by work. With human relationship, I get worried about the fact that maybe they're going to leave me or maybe they die on me. But with work, I'm not afraid of getting involved. The intro was perfect, this one. And all the little bits that you put into work, you know, I put myself in your capable and loving hands. But, uh... There are those who believe that Yoko couldn't have a recording career without Lennon's support, but she's proved them wrong. Last year, she signed her own recording contract and released an album with the encouraging title, It's All Right. The album was a big break with her past. Catchy pop music, not aggressive avant-garde, full of songs about survival 
and acceptance. As I was going to the studio, I had this distinct feeling that uh, now I'm going to the studio to uh, carry on the work that John and I did together. She recently took on a painful task, completing Milk and Honey, an album of songs the Lennons were working on at the time of John's murder. Now, whenever I do anything, I feel that uh, I would like to do something that would not uh, shame his name or that would not embarrass him. And it's a very strange feeling, you know, but yes, that's how I feel. Thank you for the music and happy birthday. Milk and Honey was one milestone in her life. Recently, she celebrated another, her 50th birthday. Outspoken in her work, she is shy in public, so she celebrated quietly at home with her small but loyal circle of friends and with her new family, the fans of John Lennon, who are coming to appreciate the woman he loved. Lennon's death has redrawn their portrait of Yoko Ono. I think she's a beautiful person, and I love her very much. I hope my life is as full and active as hers at 50. My feeling is that one of the reasons that I can go on and on and on and make things and all that is because everything is in the state of flux, you know. And uh, that's what I like about things. And that's what I like about uh, what I do is because... Um, Nothing is really stationary. It's sort of, um, uh, unlike a wind that goes into all different kinds of, um, different kinds of space. And that's why life is interesting. Yeah, but you have to have that kind of, you know, sort of funk, you know, different kind of funk. My life up to now was like um, like a pre prelude to my life. You know what I mean? <laughs> Recently, mm, uh, I had to learn um, some very hard lessons. <laughs> it was pretty hard. I came out of it, and uh, it's amazing that I came out of it. Um, but now I feel that with all that experience, that um, I'm going to start a new life. Mm. That's how I feel about it. And I don't know how it's going to be, but um, probably that's how it's going to be. Mm. Mm. Did I make myself clear? Mm -hmm. Waiting in the phone book for someone to call. But now that it's 